Hello, my name is Dr. Madison Oak. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to have you here. Today, I want to talk about visual vertigo. I'm a vestibular physical therapist. I'm here to help you with all things dizziness and vertigo, but really, really commonly, I get this complaint that's that my patients say, every single time something's moving in front of me, I feel like I'm moving. If I'm in a busy environment, if I'm standing on the street and cars go by, if I am driving and everything around me is moving, I feel like I'm moving in a weird way and I can't really explain it. This is called visual vertigo and it's a really big thing for people. So let's break down why it happens, what it means, and what we can do about it. I want to remind you that none of this is medical advice. Everything here is purely for informational purposes. And if you want to change something about your healthcare plan based on something you see here, please, please, please talk to your doctor before doing so. Don't listen to a doctor on the internet. For my patients who I see all the time, they tell me, oh my goodness, I never knew that I could get visual vertigo. It's really frustrating and I don't know what to do about it. I explain it to them like this. If you're sitting in the car and this happens to everyone, this scenario, if you're sitting in the car and you just pulled up, you're parked in a parking lot and someone next to you reverses, right? So you're sitting here, you're like, okay, I'm just like about to get out of the car or whatever. And someone reverses next to you, you go, oh my God. And you like slam your foot on the brakes right? That happens all the time. It happens to me. It happens to my mom. It happens to tons of people. It's normal. That is like an instantaneous second of your body being like, I don't know where we are in space because in your peripheral vision, that car is moving by you. And because the car is moving this way, we automatically don't think that they're moving. We go into the fear response of, oh my gosh, we're going to crash into the median ahead of us. Now, usually we're not going to crash into the median ahead of us, but that's definitely how it feels. And so we automatically slam on the brake, put our hands in the steering wheel and go, <gasps> and then we realize we're not moving and okay, we can calm down again, right? If you have a vestibular disorder, that second part where we calm down again often doesn't happen because this is probably something that happens to you a lot versus just once in a while. Now, if you have a vestibular disorder or you think you might have a vestibular disorder, I want to kind of dive into why this happens so frequently. You have three systems of balance, and these three are really important to understand. Your first system of, system of balance is your vision. Most of information is brought into the brain through your vision, right? It's the first and fastest thing. Then we have our vestibular system. The vestibular system is deep in our inner ear, and it helps with things like acceleration, deceleration, knowing we, where we are in space, and tons of other cool stuff. Then you have your proprioception, and proprioception is when the way that you can feel the world around you. So like I am, my feet right now are on carpet and I know that my butt is in a chair and I know that my arm is either straight or bent. All of that is proprioception. It's kind of cool and it really is super helpful for us in order to know where we are in space. When you have a vestibular disorder, whether that's a peripheral vestibular disorder or something happening in the inner ear or a central vestibular disorder, something happening in your brain or spinal cord, that's vestibular migraine. Out here would be something like vestibular neuritis or Meniere's disease. Um, and people can definitely have more than one. You can have a couple of vestibular diagnoses all at once. No matter where it's coming from, if you're having a vestibular disorder of some kind, your brain automatically says, we are no longer going to listen to the unreliable information coming from your vestibular system. We start to say, this is giving us, it's, it's giving us the wrong signal. It's giving us the wrong information. Okay, let's just only listen to what our eyes have to say. And all of a sudden we upregulate what our eyes have to say and every single thing that your eyes say are happening is happening. So if we go back to our car example, if you're sitting in the car and your eyes say, okay, we're, we're moving forward because the car is moving backwards, your vestibular system automatically goes into a checks and balances and says, okay, uh, we're not actually accelerating, so that's not possible, right? And those two things, they check on each other and your proprioception says, we're still sitting in the car. So these three things, they check and balance each other. But sometimes I like to compare this to the U.S. government. Sometimes we have three branches, right? We have the, the president, we have Congress, and we have um, the judicial system. And they're supposed to work in a systems of checks and balances, one, two, three. And sometimes they don't, right? I think we can all agree that sometimes they don't. And if they don't, 
just like the U.S. government, just like your vestibular system, things go a little bit haywire and things don't agree with each other. So if things don't agree with each other, then your brain gets a little bit confused. So back to the car thing, when this is happening and you have a vestibular disorder, your brain goes, okay, our vision and our peripheral vision is seeing this car move, so it must be true, and your vestibular system isn't there to really quickly, instantaneously check that system. And so then our brain starts going into fight or flight mode, starts going into, oh my gosh, we have to panic because we're about to crash into that median. And because your brain is unable to that quickly, that instantaneously recognize that you're not moving, that is called visual vertigo. So this probably happens to you more than just in the car in a parking lot. It can happen to you if you're standing in line at the grocery store and people are moving back and forth. It can happen if you're on a walk and a car drives by you. It can happen in tons of different environments where you are still or you're even moving and something next to you is moving and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know where I am in space anymore. This happens so frequently And then your brain starts to rely even more and more and more heavily the longer you have a vestibular disorder on your visual system. If this continues to happen, that new neural pathway keeps getting reinforced and reinforced and reinforced. This is really uncomfortable because then it gets to the point where you can barely scroll on your phone without having visual vertigo symptoms and it causes a lot of nausea and things like that because then you feel like you're moving when you're not moving and that's super uncomfortable. So what do we do about it? First and foremost, I always recommend treating the underlying vestibular condition if you have one. So if you have something like vestibular migraine, taking a comprehensive look at your migraine disorder as a whole from a top down and bottom up perspective, we're not just treating the head, treating your whole body. We're talking exercises, gut health, uh, meditation, breathing, yoga, uh, everything, meds. Like there are so many things that we need to be doing when we're thinking about managing migraine. So that's step one. Step two is get an appointment with a vestibular therapist who understands vestibular disorders. Not all vestibular therapists actually treat vestibular disorders. So be careful. And if you are in vestibular rehab and you're like, this doesn't seem right, find another therapist. There's nothing wrong with that. So your therapist is going to first put something that bothers you on the screen. So let's say that your issue is mostly in the mall or your goal is you want to go to the mall or the grocery store or something. They're going to put it on a screen in front of you, whether it's a computer or a TV screen or something like that in a virtual reality setting. In that virtual reality setting, it probably won't be in goggles at first. It'll be kind of on a screen in front of you. You're going to watch it, but you know around you that things aren't there. You're going to do grounding and breathing, stuff like that. Then they're maybe put you in virtual reality goggles if they have them at your clinic or you have them at home. And that's just going to be more immersive, but you're still going to be standing still. You're still going to be a safe place. Someone can be guarding you. After that, then you're going to start to slowly reintegrate yourself into the real world of your goal. So you're going to do one minute standing at the mall. Then maybe you'll be taking a lap after you can tolerate five minutes. Then you're going to be kind of going into a store, maybe buying one thing and coming out, going into the store, finding something and leaving, Um, going into the store, finding the first thing you can find and then going to the checkout line, kind of incrementally increasing this over weeks to months at a time. Now, if you want to do this, again, I highly, highly recommend you do this with a vestibular therapist. Do not do this on your own. I find more often than not that people try to do this on their own without the right instruction, without the right set of tools, and it ends up making them worse. So please do this with a vestibular therapist who you trust, who's in your area or via telehealth. I am licensed in my clinic in New York, New Jersey, Virginia, Maryland, Wyoming, California, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. So if you are in any of those states, we will be more than happy to help you at Oak Physical Therapy and Wellness. Reach out at madison at thevertigodoctor.com and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Have a great day.